Welcome to Speak of the Devils, the premier podcast for Sun Devil Football. I'm Brad Denny with 3TV. And I'm Joe Healy with DevilsDigest.com. All right, Joe, we are here at 3TV CBS 5 up in the podcast studio. A lot of cool new toys at our disposal, some bells and whistles, some graphical flair. We're bringing it all together because this is a really special episode that uh, we've been working on uh, to put together for a couple months. I think it's going to be worth the wait because today we're having a series of great conversations and taking a real deep dive into one family's incredible Sun Devil legacy. Yeah, we are fired up for this one. Uh, we got something special for our listeners and now our viewers, because not only do you get to hear our wonderful voices, you get to see our lovely faces and those of our guests as well. We're going to be talking with the Rashada family empire, starting with Harlan Rashada, who played for Arizona State in the 1990s under Bruce Snyder, and now his sons, Jaden and Roman, who will be starting their Sun Devil careers this fall. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to take a deep dive. We're going to get to know these people as human beings, as football players. We're going to talk about the family impact that they want to have on Arizona State. There is a lot that we're going to cover. Trust me, you're going to love it. Joining us first, one of the most decorated quarterback recruits in the history of Sun Devil football, continuing the family legacy of the Rashada family. Jaden Rashada. Jaden, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. So you've been in Tempe full time here for a few months. Obviously, you're no stranger to this area. But what's it been like living in the Tempe area, being a Sun Devil, being an ASU student for these last few months? Um, Yeah, so I'm, I was a bit familiar with the area before just because this is a place I've been a couple of times and um, but honestly, like just as far as me acclimating has been, you know, um, more than I can ask for. I've been uh, loving every, you know, every second of it. We got a pretty good team, you know, not a not, you know, not much egos on our team at all. Everybody's just, you know, trying to get better and um, yeah, just trying to win. So after what's been like you know, kind of that whirlwind period mm -hmm. near the end of last year and then ultimately landing at Arizona State. What's it just been like for you to just being able to have the ability to just kind of focus on football, you know, starting college life, adapting to, you know, the next chapter of your life after kind of all that chaos? Yeah, it's been such a blessing because it was something that I prayed on a long time and <clears throat> just me wanting to just get back to my main focus and just working hard and, you know, keeping the main thing the main thing. So the recruiting process for you, chaotic to say the least. Mm. As you look back at it, uh, what were some of the most important life lessons you learned? What did you learn about yourself as you went through that whole process? Yeah, I learned a lot about myself. Um, probably one of the most life-changing years that I've had so far. You know, I'm still young, but I took a lot from it. And um, yeah, um, I, I say just, you know, just uh, what I probably took from it was just, um, you know, just read people, you know, um, if you see the real in people, then just trust them. And, you know, a big thing that I learned was trust. Obviously, that was a big thing that I've learned in my recruitment. And But um, I'm really just glad things uh, I'm here now. You know, I'm grateful to be here um, with a great coaching staff and um, a great team. So after the Florida situation, you know, obviously the national discourse was kind of running hot. You know, a lot of fans out there on social media, message boards and all that had, had lots to say. Just, you know, how did you kind of react to just kind of all that external noise and you know when at that time you're just trying to find the right program mm. and try the right place for to continue your football career yeah um, i understand there's a lot of you know emotional fans out there and stuff like that that just comes with you know being in the position i'm in so i never reacted to it you know just kind of took the bullet for whatever was thrown my way um no matter you know what it was you know i just always remain myself and uh that's something i'm you know happy i did you know didn't really give anybody a reaction that they were looking for you know i just remained myself and uh that was a big thing with me you know just keeping yourself throughout uh chaotic situations like that so walk our listeners through the the re-recruitment process as it were you know you got you get your release from florida you're back on the market obviously there's going to be a lot of schools coming after you how did you kind of navigate through the the flood of those schools coming after you what were some of the things that you really what you're looking for and ultimately why arizona state was the choice for you yeah i was just looking for a place that like meant a lot to me and uh somewhere where i can come in and focus on football and focus on my life um and this was like you know obviously you know a lot of people know how much this means to me i was pretty familiar with the program you know my dad played here and you know i get to come here and play with my brother so you know you know family that was a big thing with me, you know, just feeling part of a family and, 
you know, it was uh, such a blessing to to be able to, you know, finally have peace with my decision and be able to focus on football. And talking about being at peace with that decision, mm -hmm. when you signed that letter of intent to attend ASU, the recruitment process was over mm -hmm. and you can just look ahead to playing ball. How did yeah. you feel in that moment? What was that sigh of relief like at that time? Yeah, um, it was just more so like an eye opener, like, you know, uh, it's time to get to work. You know, it's time to prove a lot of people wrong and prove myself right. So that's kind of how I looked at that situation. And it helped me regroup and refocus. And, uh, yeah. Kenny Dillingham mentioned that uh, when you were a kid that you drew a picture of yourself, you know, playing for the Sun Devils uh, yeah. one day. Um, what's it mean to continue that kind of the lineage of the Rashada family in Maroon and Gold? And, you know, was that how, how much of that legacy? You know, you mentioned there's a few other reasons why you chose AC. How much was that? ability and that that opportunity to continue that legacy uh, uh a factor for you and ultimately deciding to go to asu yeah um it was a it was a pretty big factor you know i'd be lying if i said it wasn't um that was a huge factor with me i know uh that picture that i drew up it was like a pitch for it with the number five and you know um obviously because my dad played here and stuff and and it was it was like a gift i get it was a long time i didn't even know he still had it <laughs> um but yeah, he ended up keeping it and not seeing it. And, um, you know, obviously that meant, you know, a lot to him, you know. So, man, I'm, I just, it was just a decision that I had to make. You know, it meant a lot to me. So I, um, I just took it and ran with it. So now, with everything that you've gone through, uh, does that give you any extra, extra motivation, mm -hmm. maybe even like a chip on your shoulder to go out and, be the absolute best not that you wouldn't anyway but is yeah. it a little extra motivation for you for your football career yeah 100 percent um you know i that's something i think about every day you know um just you know i never really forget things i just kind of keep a storage in my head about things in the past i don't think about them in a negative way you know just try to keep that as a positive thing to push me and keep working hard and like i said earlier you know like prove prove myself right you know um, and, and prove a lot of people wrong, but you know, that's, that, that's a big thing that, that, uh, goes into my motivation. And, um, it was definitely something that was a experience, a humbling experience where, where I had to, you know, f look myself in the mirror and, and really had to figure out what I wanted to get out of this situation and what I want to ac accomplish in college football. Now you've uh, previously announced a partnership with a local uh, bicycle shop and I seen you since arriving Tempe. And kind of given your experience and just your stature as just a well-known quarterback, what's your view on NIL and its place in college athletics? And um, you know, how has your experience kind of shaped your view through that process? Yeah, um, see, my experience probably would be different than a lot of other people. So, um, you know, how I look at NIL, it could definitely help a lot of kids. And, and it definitely is helping a lot of, uh, you know, people around college football and sports in general, you know, so I definitely think NIO is a great thing. You know, I think if it's used in the right way, NIO like uh, is definitely something that athletes deserve to capitalize on their name. And um, yeah, I definitely think it's a good thing. And as long as it's done the right way. You know, going through the process, you know, the ups and downs um, that you went through and, and kind of the chaos, ultimately, you're landing at the right place for you. What would be your advice to you know other future high profile recruits you know people that you know might have dollars thrown at them or just you know a lot of schools going just the stress of you know just ultimately trying to find the best place to continue the next chapter of your life yeah um i would say like the most important thing that i got out of it and i didn't know till i got here was um how important it is to find your fit you know a lot of kids they they get recruited you know highly and think they have to go to those schools or you know, think it's too hard to pass up that opportunity. But my advice to them was just would just be, you know, um, go somewhere where you could be yourself, you know, and work your hardest and and wherever the place is that fits you the best. In my opinion, you know, that'll make your adjustment to college way easier. When Kenny Dillingham was hired for ASU last November, the energy around here went through the roof. Mm -hmm. What makes him the college coach for you to play for? In my opinion, uh, he's the same guy recruiting you as he is coaching you. Um, you know, his offense is, you know, quarterback, receiver. Yeah, his offense is pretty crazy. So um, I think that's that's a big thing. Um, why why my trust was put in him just as how he's proven himself as an offensive coordinator. And now he's a head coach. And um, most importantly, he gets his players to play for him, you know, and 
everybody on the team will tell you he's the same dude recruiting you as he is coaching you. So I think that's what makes uh, Coach Dilly uh, pretty elite. All right, so let's get a little technical now. Let's, uh, you know, what really kind of stands out when you look at the playbook and the the Dillingham, uh, Bo Baldwin offense. You know, from a quarterback's perspective, it seems you know watching spring, it seemed like you got it was kind of like almost the quarterback's a point guard. You have so many playmakers out there. Mm. You know, get that ball out in under like three seconds, two and a half seconds. You know, what? How do you feel about your command about the offense and what kind of what things really kind of jump out to you about why Dillingham has a reputation of being so quarterback friendly as a, as a coach and as an offensive uh, schemer? Yeah. Um... He's a super good instructor, um, especially with the quarterback position. So he's always, you know, um, you know, a big thing is, you know, just playing the next play, getting, you know, um, can't go broke by taking profit. And, you know, super technical with that, get the ball out, um, as you guys know. But, yeah, that's that's uh, my opinion on that. Tell us about your relationship with offensive coordinator, Bull Baldwin. Yeah. What do you like about him so far? How are you guys bonding? Uh, me and Coach Baldwin are doing pretty well. Um, you know, he's another, he's another coach that was the same recruiting as he is a coach. And, you know, that's, that's all you can ask for really. And from there, it's in your hands, you know, to take as much information as you can from him and learn as much as you can from him. And, uh, he's done a good job, you know, just coaching and, you know, um, just, he's been a real good teacher, you know, to all us quarterbacks in the room, especially me being a true freshman, you know, coming in there. Obviously, uh, you know, I had no clue about anything that was going on uh, offensive wise. So he came in and and he's been doing a real good job, you know, teaching me the whole scheme and being patient with me and and uh, kind of taking me under the wing and and showing me the whole ins and outs of the offense. All right. So before we go and talk about the, kind of the, the future ahead, I want to go back to in, in the past to the Jaden order origin story. How did you initially get into into football? Was it you know, kind of just your dad getting you into the game and following your dad's footsteps? And ultimately, how did you kind of find your way as, to the quarterback position? Mm. And also, do you remember your first touchdown pass? Ooh. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I think it was a, against a team called like the San Ramon T Birds. But I've a uh, I've always like um I've always been around the game. You know, I grew up watching my older brother play and my dad coaching and uh. You know, I was always on the sideline, you know, with a couple of my friends, you know, at the games. And it was just something I always wanted to do. I don't think it was anything that was forced on me at all. And uh, I didn't know I was a quarterback. Um, my first football coach ever, Joseph Garanya, um, I played for the East County Lions. And and that's when I he he uh, he he went and told my dad, like, yeah, I think he's going to play quarterback. But I wanted to play running back because <laughs> I was a little kid and I knew they touched the ball every play. But I always wanted the ball in my hands. Um, and he introduced me to the uh, quarterback position. And I was super young, probably like six or seven years old. So, you know, it wasn't much throwing going on then. But, you know, it was um, it was like when I played quarterback, I definitely like didn't want to play any other position besides safety. <laughs> oh, yeah. safety. Okay. He's yeah. playing a little Roman with, uh, with the DB there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. When did you know that you had a chance to, that you were good enough uh, to, to perhaps, you know, play at the next level and, and perhaps beyond? Um, well, football was just something I always had fun with and um, I always had like big dreams and, you know, being the highly recruited guy and being an all American and I was, like, I always looked up to those guys when I was younger and, um, you know, I really didn't know that that like, uh, you know, how my career was going to go until my eighth grade year. You know, that's kind of when I had a a decent amount of separation. And um, that was actually when I got my first offer too from San Jose State. And and really that day was probably like, oh, shoot, like, um, you know, like I might I might end up pretty good. <laughs> but it was it was a that was definitely like I didn't know what I was walking into my eighth grade year you know i was just playing the game and and then uh yeah when that happened in the eighth grade uh i was kind of when i was like all right so for anyone who hasn't seen your film or who didn't see you play in high school mm -hmm. what type of qb are you tell us about your game what are your greatest strengths um i think that's something that more so my film would tell you um but it's hard shoot, to brag just, about yourself a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's okay. The numbers um, speak for themselves. All those, all those numbers you put <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, I would say just um, you know, I like to stretch the ball downfield. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do, and um, that's uh, 
that's one of my favorite things to do is stretch the ball downfield and um, distribute the ball to all my receivers, you know, not just one guy or two guys. Like I'd like to distribute the ball all over the field. And, um, yeah, I like to stretch the ball downfield and, and uh, yeah. So obviously you're a guy that can hurt teams with the with the arm, you know, stretching that ball down the field or with your legs, uh, you know. But it's, that does seem like you're kind of that pass first quarterback rather than just you know the, taking off of the first sign of, of pressure and using that mobility to kind of buy more time for your receivers. How do you kind of balance that, you know, you know that in the pocket when you're in the middle of a play, you got the defenders bearing down on you, but you know that you use the, the time to kind of you know make that play work how do, how do you kind of like balance that kind of you know the knowing the ability that you can take off and run mm-hmm. versus kind of you know making the uh, you know sticking in there for just that, that, that extra half second or so to make the play down the field yeah um yeah i think that's pretty important you know being able to um execute under pressure and uh you know that always makes or breaks a quarterback and honestly that's a you know, something I enjoy doing, just making plays, you know, especially when dudes are in your face, because after that thing, it's like, then, then what do you do? You know, so I think that's kind of my approach to that. And um, yeah, I, I kind of, you know, I don't like to leave the pocket, but I will if I have to. And and uh, yeah, I like staying in there and, and um, you know, I like staying in there and completing passes. Is the co- have the, has the coaching staff to, like talk to you? Because I know the last staff had a thing with you know with Jaden Daniels of just like they really did not like him running or like mm-hmm. just no one to get down. Have they talked to you about you know maybe curtailing the running aspect or are they just letting letting you kind of go out there and let it fly? Yeah, no, you just out there and go make plays. You know, um, they they haven't really told us that we can't you know run the ball or none of that. The they're aware of um, us extending plays and. And uh, being a quarterback. So, of course, you got to campus in time for spring ball. Talk about that experience. How would you evaluate your performance in the spring and what sort of goals did you and maybe the staff have for you for the offseason? Yeah. Um, a big thing with me was, uh, you know, obviously the playbook, learning the playbook. So I, I would say my biggest uh, my biggest jump was not physically. It was it was like uh, mentally. So like the playbook I've been learning every single day, you know, so that's something that uh, definitely has been um you know, true freshman coming in spring ball. So that's that's a big deal, you know, is is the playbook, knowing what you're doing while you're out there. And, uh, you know, you learn something new every day. So that's something I actually been enjoying, you know, um, just the small details of the game of football because that's what you're exposed to in college. So that's something I've been enjoying and, and uh, just going through the process with that. And what sort of things have you been working on since spring ball to get ready for the season? Um, I've been working on everything, you know, getting my weight up, uh, you know, getting more accurate, getting more power, getting more velocity on my ball. Like just I've been working on literally everything. Um, I just feel that that's what I need to do for me to go and perform and be prepared. So I was out there covering all the practices and it seemed like especially early on that, you know, the coaching staff with a couple of veteran quarterbacks in the roster was kind of bringing on uh, long slowly. And you were, yeah. as you mentioned, kind of taking some a lot of the mental reps out there and kind of getting you allow, allowing you to get acclimated and comfortable out there. You know, with, all, you know, many other blue chip quarterbacks are often kind of, you know, thrown in the fire oftentimes mm-hmm. before they're ready. How do you feel about this? The staff's kind of a, a patient approach for you, just kind of letting you come along and, and get comfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, I appreciate it. Um, they definitely have been patient with me and, you know, been teaching me to play book, been teaching me everything. So um, that's been a part of the process that I've been enjoying. You know, obviously I'm a competitor, so I want to be out there as much as possible. But when I'm not um, in the meantime, I know there's a lot you can take mentally, you know, from other people's reps and um, the whole offense, you know, just being a student of the game. So the 2023 season is coming up here pretty soon. What mm-hmm. sort of goals and expectations do you have for yourself for this freshman year? Um, you know, I've, you know, I've, uh, you know, that just more so goes um, on what my role is during the season, and uh, you know, we'll see what that is. But um, definitely, my my goals are just to be a great teammate and be there for my team, and and just keep learning as much as possible, and never not be prepared. You know, I want to be prepared every week want to be prepared every day so a big thing with me is just preparation and being there for my team you know from the quarterbacks in my in in the quarterback room to you know the defensive you know the whole defense just want to be there for my whole team as an into you know as a um that's the big goal for me as a uh, individual is to 
be there for my team and, you know, uh, just be prepared and get better every day. You're one of the highest rated quarterbacks in the country and are widely viewed as the ASU's quarterback of the future and a lot of expectations. How much pressure do you feel from those views and kind of the external pre pressure expectations that come along with being as highly rated as you are? Um, and how do you kind of manage you know, that, that pressure if there's if you do feel a pressure? Yeah, um, well, it's I look at it as a blessing, you know, pressure, you know, a lot of people don't like it. But me, I look at it as a good thing, you know, and honestly, uh, I'm blessed to have that pressure because I'm sure a lot of kids would want that. Um, but I, I don't really, um, you know, it's not nothing that brings me down or makes me think that I have to perform this way. You know, it's more so like, oh, I got these people who believe I can do this. So I'm going to go out there and do it. And um, honestly, it's it's nothing I look at negativity. You know, it's not nothing I look at uh, that, that I can't, you know, um, that I can't like go about or pursue. But. No, it def definitely is, is a blessing I look at it as, you know. Um, got people counting on me, so I know not to let them down. So there's a lot of talent in that quarterback room right mm -hmm. now. How's that competition helped your development, and, and what sort of advice and guidance have you gotten from guys maybe like uh, Trenton Borgay or Drew mm -hmm. Fine who have starting experience uh, at this level? Yeah, just getting each other uh, better every day, you know. Um, you know, if I, if I have questions, I'll ask them something, you know. Um, there's something I'm not really afraid to do, and um, – but yeah, everybody in that room has been there for me. And, you know, we gotta we all have a pretty good bond in there. So that's been pretty solid. How excited are you to to play with your brother Roman yeah. in, in Tempe? You know, and how how much of a recruiter uh, were you and get him Tempe? Or is it just the, the opportunity was pretty it's a pretty straightforward move? Yeah, I'm excited. I I never got to uh, play with a family member. So, you know, that's that was one of the biggest blessings coming here as well. Um, you know, uh you know, just little things like being in workouts, you know, looking across the room and I get to see my brother. That's something that I never had the opportunity to do. Um, so something that I definitely don't take for granted and I learn a lot from him. So that's a yeah, that's been a you know, I, I didn't really have to recruit him here either. Um, we both know how much, you know, how much this place means to us. So it's kind of, you know, just man, like this was something we always dreamed of. So finally uh, made it happen. So it really seems like this new coaching staff has, has rejuvenated just the spirit and the energy. It looks like guys are having fun out there playing. Uh, it seems like the great sense of camaraderie, brotherhood among the players on the team. How have you been able to bond with your teammates since you got here uh, earlier this year? Yeah, man, it's been great. Uh, it really does feel like a family. I, I haven't been a part of a team like this uh, as far as a team bond like this, um, you know, in a long time, in a super long time. So. It's definitely um, it's definitely been good, you know, clicking with all my teammates, you know, and everybody, you know, offense, defense, side of the ball, everybody comes together and, you know, we're having fun every day. So. So obviously you're just getting your college career started, but mm -hmm. when your Sun Devil career is finished, what do you want to accomplish? What uh, how do you want to be remembered at Arizona State? Um, yeah, I just want to be remembered as, um, you know, I want to go down as, you know, one of the best quarterbacks to play here, you know, and. You know, I also want to go down as one of the best human beings, you know, just being a great person known as the guy who was always there for teammates and known as the guy who was, you know, always, you know, there for people. And I think that's a big thing with me is just, you know, being a better person than you are athlete. I think that'll take you a long way. Kind of on that note, I mean, we've heard all about Jaden Rashada, the athlete. The mm. world has heard the stories, but let's let's talk about Jaden Rashada, the guy, the yeah. person, the human being. Uh what kind of interests do you have? Hobbies do you have? Have you picked a major? Just tell us a little bit about yourself as a person. Yeah, um, I picked a major in interdisciplinary studies. Um, that's what I got my degree in. Same here. There we go. Yeah, all right, the right man. Yeah, that's probably where I'll go with. And um, just as far as me as a person, you know, uh, shoot, I like a, you know, I'll, I'll do, I don't know, I'll do whatever. You know, I'll go, um, you know, I like to fish. I haven't found much good spots out here. They go and he, he Roman will go fish catching these uh bass that don't even weigh a pound. So <laughs> y'all might he he might have to I don't know. I, I can't do that. I don't like waiting in the in the water that long for that. But but uh once I find a good uh once I find a good fishing spot, I like fishing. Just like doing different things, you know. Uh, yeah, um I mean 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what I like doing. That's a good question. Most of the time, I just like, uh, you know, playing Madden with some of my teammates or something. I had CJ and Ash over yesterday. We were just playing Madden and – yeah, just like, you know, just chilling with some of the teammates, just having a good time. The heat's not going to get you too much? You're probably used to that already? Nah, I've been good. Honestly, the heat hasn't – it hasn't been as bad as I, you know, thought. Obviously, well, it's going to get worse. Yeah, This yeah. isn't the worst of it. Maybe. But it, it's not as bad as, like, you know, I think I'll, I'll be good. Yeah, for sure. Until those pads – yeah, right until the pads come on or something like that. There uh, you go. There you go. But, nah, I'll be good. He, he, I, I'd rather deal with the heat than the cold any day of the week. Hey, I'm with you right there, so. my friend. Yeah. Jaden, truly appreciate you, my man. Appreciate you guys. Awesome. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. And also continuing the Rashada family legacy for Sun Devil football. Great story here about to begin his Sun Devil career this fall. Roman Rashada. Roman, thank you for joining us, my friend. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you for having me. So just doing a little research, learn about you, man. It seems like it's been a winding road for you the last uh, several years. A couple high school stops, JUCO, Old Miss last year, now Arizona State. After a lot of movement for you, how does it feel to be settled in as a Sun Devil? It feels good. Um, feels good to be here with my brother, um, to finally be here. It's, it feels like a place that, you know, like I've always wanted to be. So, um, for, for me, for us to finally be here is, is special. So. Now, obviously <clears throat> with your dad as an alum, Jane coming to ACU, those are key reasons for you to become a Sun Devil. But aside from those factors, I mean, obviously you got to make the best decision for yourself. What else motivated you to come to ACU? Yeah. Um, shoot, man, just the. The community really like I, I I personally knew if I was playing for um, a logo of school that that had deeper meaning to me, then it would bring the best out of me. Um, also, Coach Ward is amazing. D.C., you know, his track record speaks for itself. And um, I think Coach Dillingham would do something special. So all that on top of, you know, being able to play with my 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 family and, and continue that that tradition was it's kind of a no brainer. You know, it'd be weird if I if I didn't take the opportunity. Now, along those lines, you know, how does it feel to not only continue your dad's legacy here, but to also do so alongside and in tandem with your brother? It feels great. Um, really a dream come true. That's an understatement. But, you know, like it's it's so real. Like it's one of those things where it's like you imagined it and you almost like believed it growing up. And like for for our past to just combine like the way it did, um, it's just truly unbelievable. Really God, really. So. Now, uh, obviously, you know, you're uh, going along with your career. You're at Ole Miss last year, but then you see your brother kind of at the center of everything that kind of went down. You know, what is it like as kind of as the older brother, um, you know, kind of seeing your brother have to go through a situation like that? Um, that I mean, that, that situation was unlike any anything around the nation, anything that's ever happened. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's adversity. So just, you know, being a – a, a brother you know to my my little brother you know making sure he makes the best decision possible for him not what anybody else is saying and just you know assisting him the best way i possibly could as a brother in a in a, in a situation like that so so going back a little bit to your your coming here i remember seeing on twitter a screenshot of a text with gene boyd and you and like yeah. things all coming together. Tell, tell us about that, that whole circumstance. That seemed like something. Yeah. Um, so Gene, like it, Gene's dad and my dad, uh, Gene Boyd, he's the athletic director, I believe. Um, they went to college together. So, you know, we grew up kind of with little Gene and I, I believe it was like, I, I, it was towards the end of the season last year at, at, when I was still in Mississippi. And like, I had a dream that we were playing together and like I told him that I was like, yo, it was crazy. Like I just had a dream that me, you, and Jaden, like we were at ASU somehow, some way. I don't know. And lo and behold, like it's you know a couple months go by, and that ended up being reality. So I think it was just kind of crazy how that came about. Um, you know, it's just a freak situation. So uh, tell us about your game. Uh, where do you fit in best position wise with this uh, with this defense? Tell us about. Roman on the field. Yeah, so I, I played free safety, strong safety, and corner when I was in junior college and high school too. Um, in this offense, I just I, I fit well at the nickel. Um, that's where I'll be playing this year. Um, but o ultimately, just establishing establishing that that versatility. You know, I I've played everywhere, so anywhere I could, you know, help the team and just provide value and help us win. You know, the most important thing is winning. 
So wherever that is, um, that's where that's where I'll, I'll be. But as of now, uh, the nickel is where I see myself um, best best adding on to the, the the talent we have on the back end. Now you mentioned earlier that Brian Warden, you know, the new DC, is you know, brought a lot of excitement in this four two five scheme of his. Really seems to have the players fired up, very aggressive, at least compared to what ASU was running last year. You know, a lot of moving parts. You know, it's always kind of making the life hard for an offense. You know, what really kind of jumps out to you about the schematic things that this defense likes to do and some of the roles that the the guys like in the secondary get to play in it? Um, his ability kind of to craft, like, just, like, uh, make everybody stable. So the, the, the stability that he, he like, uh, kind of, he makes everything simple, but really the pressure. Like, I, I believe that where we will separate our, ourselves this year is creating that pressure up front. Um, that'll just open up a whole new window for us on the back end. But I, I think Coach Ward does a phenomenal job at putting, you know, his key his key front seven um, in, in situations where they're able to make big plays. And ultimately, that just helps us on the back end. So, so as a defensive back, you're the natural enemy of a quarterback. So what's your like, opposing scouting report on Jaden and what, he, what challenges he presents to a defense? Um, he's just – He's really talented, man. Like it when he gets on fire, he's just he has a way to where he could just keep rolling. And that's always the worst thing to deal with as a defensive back is when a quarterback, you know, c- can get in that zone and, you know, get rolling because you there's nothing you can do really. Um, but other than that, he he can make he can make throws that I haven't really not just saying that I haven't seen another quarterback being able to make, even in practice, you know, now, you know, it's just He's he's blessed. So, uh, what drew you to Old Miss last year, and what was that experience like uh, playing there in the SEC? Yeah, um, I, I didn't I didn't actually play. So last year I registered, but just being being there from day one, that was my only SEC offer. Um, I wanted to to go to the highest pinnacle of college, you know, football. Um, I've always been competitive, so that was just my goal. I was just compete, like always compete at the highest level. Um, I learned a lot, brought the best out of me as a, as a human being, as a man, um, a, a lot of adversity, you know, so I, I knew that was what I was getting into. And that's exactly why I chose it. Um, but overall, just a great experience. I, I have really no complaints. So now uh, how do you compare living and going to school in the Tempe area and ASU compared to what life was like in Oxford? Um, similar, very different, but similar also, you know, both college towns, um, you know, you, you got the same experience, but it's like two different worlds, you, you know? So it's like down South, you know, I, I would kind of say like, in terms of like the PAC 12, like almost like ASU is almost like the old Miss of the PAC 12 in terms of like the structure of the school and like the traditions and stuff. It's a lot of similarities that I see, but just living down South, like I loved it. I always wanted to live down South. So an opportunity to go down there and play football and live down there was amazing. Um, met a lot of amazing people um, and a lot of amazing memories that I'll hold on, you know, until the day I die. Now, obviously, you guys are in the middle of the offseason uh, strength and conditioning program, getting those workouts in in preparation for fall camp here in a little bit. What have been your personal areas of focus and things that you've been working on to get yourself ready for fall camp? The first fall camp is the Sun Devil. Um, just being mentally prepared, um, you know, putting in excessive hours into that playbook, you know, just trying to get to a point where it's second nature. Um, like, it, you know, the, that that's really been my emphasis. Um, the physical aspect of it, that'll all come, you know, with repetition, but ultimately like trying to be dialed into this new scheme and just being able to, you know, ha- like be reliable in that way. What are your goals for this upcoming 2023 season? To win. I don't, I don't want to lose. I don't like losing. So that's like, I, I want us to win as much as possible. So like if we got to break habits, if it's certain habits that we got to keep going, um, that, that is like the ultimate goal is to win. So tell us about Kenny Dillingham, your experience with him. What makes him the coach that you want to play for, for your college ball? Um, he has a different way of bonding with the players. You know, he's, he, he's obviously a little bit younger for a head coach, um, that has no reflection on like his his smarts. Like he's always in our meetings, in our DB meetings, you know, with Coach Ward, and like you kind of just have a chance to see how he digests information, and you could tell he's just a very smart dude. Um, but he uh, just going back, he has a a different way of bonding with the players. 
Um, and I think that's what gives him leverage as a coach. And um, I think it's just the start of a, a long career for him as a successful coach. Yeah, I saw him doing like magic card tricks and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. with guys like this, yeah. this next level stuff. Yeah. So we want to get to know about you as a human being. Uh, first and foremost, uh, yeah, little brother over there was throwing some major shade about your your fishing. So let's uh, let's give you the chance to rebuttal. Is what he's saying true about your skills as a fisherman? Look, I got proof <laughs> in my phone. <laughs> That's all I got to say. He obviously never goes because he knows he'll have no luck. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I hold the title right now for the biggest fish in Arizona in our family. Okay. What'd it's you just, get? It, it was about, I think it was a three pounder or something, but this, <laughs> this guy never goes because he, he knows he'll never have luck. So I just, I'd be racking it, man. You got to get a championship belt for you there. Yeah. So, hundred percent. So kind of like we were talking about with Jaden. I mean, we've, we've heard a lot about you as an athlete. Tell us, uh, tell us about you as a person. You were telling us uh, before you started recording that you're going to be starting marketing. Uh, tell us about that, what the future holds for you in that regard. Once football is done, just tell us about the Roman Rashad of the guy. Yeah, um, I just try to be where my feet are at this point in my life. Um, I just uh, just very detail orientated. I'm trying to just continuously get better as a, as who I am as a, a young man um, and just be a, a good son, a good brother, um, but also just be um, at just continue to excel in the career that I'm in, rather than be football or, you know, the material that I'm studying in marketing for school, um, even doing internships, just cont progressively like getting better is my main focus. So I'm just football and career orientated is who I am. Uh, and then I like to fish and destroy my family. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what is it about the marketing field that appeals to you? Do you have any ideas of what you might want to do with that career wise when that time comes? Yeah, just brand development has always intrigued me, like being able to like build something and, um, like kind of just be a part of like this vision and, and, and put it in a life in terms of like a product or even a company, um, just standing for something like beyond what the actual physical product is. So I would say brand development. That's always been intriguing to me. Perfect. Roman, we truly appreciate you. We'll see how the story develops as time goes on. Who can, if you can, if you keep the championship belt for fishing and all that, but for now, my friend truly appreciate you taking some time for us. Thank you guys. Joining us now, the patriarch of the Rashada family dynasty at Arizona State University. He played for the Sun Devils in the 1990s under the late head coach Bruce Snyder. Harlan Rashada, my man, thank you so much for joining us. Right on, Joe. Appreciate you having me. All right, Harlan. So uh, we got to get to the big stuff real, real, uh, right off the bat. The nickname Shark. You know, there, there, there's some. We asked you. We asked your boys about the origin there, and they were definitely threw it back. He got to ask him. Got to ask him. So sounds like there might be a, a fun story there. So how did the shark nickname come to you? No, you know, it's really not that deep. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like I, I had that nickname since the, I think like the eighth grade. It was a friend of mine who, oh, he just gave me that name. He just called me shark. And, um, you know, the funny part was it, it just kind of stuck. And then um, football wise, like eighth grade, ninth grade, you know, I was playing against all these guys. It just, it stuck on the field. And um, it just it carried with me ever since eighth grade, all the way through high school and through college. And you know, everybody was like, "What does it mean?" And it really wasn't some big crazy deal, <laughs> but it did kind of it, it carried over into football. You didn't go like cool. out in the ocean and like no, punch a shark I didn't. In the yeah, face or no, like I didn't have like a shark fin, you know, like <laughs> stitched in the back of my jersey or some crazy deal like that. It just. It was a nickname. It just stuck, you yeah, know. It's kind of with it as a defender, you have some predatory instincts going after the, it uh, the ball. It, fits. it, it, fits, it did. Know? It did, man. I mean, I I, I liked it. I, I love the nickname. I mean, a lot of guys get nicknames they don't like. Right, you yeah. know, I mean, it, it, you know, it stuck. I think there was like a long time ago there was like a DB in the NFL, and he had the whole shark nickname too, and he would do the thing with the fin and you know and all that kind of stuff. So I mean. It was a cool nickname. You, you know go. I mean? I, it's been all right for me. You know, I'm not complaining. Could have called me something worse. There you, know? you go, man. So let's talk about your experience as a Sun Devil playing again for the late Bruce Snyder in the yeah. 1990s. Uh, when you were going through your recruitment process, what made Tempe and ASU stand out to you? And why did you ultimately choose to become a Sun Devil? Yeah, you know, it was kind of crazy. Um, I didn't go through anything like my sons did. Um, my, my process was a little different, you know. Um, Coming from Northern California, Bruce Snyder had just finished up uh, what was actually a historical run at Cal. You know, um, uh, Donnie Henderson, who 
was just here recently under Herm, ironically, um, who was my DB coach at Arizona State, was also a DB coach at Cal, you know, with uh, Bruce Snyder. I think they finished like fourth in the country. And, you know, me being from Northern California, that was like right in my backyard. You know, I went to games. I watched these guys, you know, just in dog fights, playing UW, you know, playing. They just had a real good team. And uh, Bruce Snyder, you know, he, he kind of caught my attention. And uh, when recruiting came along with me, you know, I got recruited from some Pac-10 at the time schools, some good ones. And um, I remember when uh, Donnie Henderson and, and uh, you know, uh, Bruce and Coke Cazetto yep. at the time actually came to my high school. I respected what they did. I watched them at Cal. And then I saw uh, a guy named Ray Sanders who actually uh, – he came to ASU and worked for a minute with the program, but he actually played with uh, Bruce um, under Donnie Henderson at Cal, and he went to Skyline High School, the, the school I went to. So there was a lot of familiarities, and, you know, of course there was some controversy with how he left Cal. That's a whole other deal. But that was the first class, you know, that he brought to Arizona State. And, um, you know, I just kind of thought, you know, ASU, when I when I took my trip down there and and uh, got to see the place, and I had a great visit, you know. Um, I thought the weather was cool, you know. You know, obviously it was hot, but that didn't bother me. Um, but we had a great visit. We stayed at the point. They had the Playboy All-American um uh, festival deal at the point when I was there. So that was a, a, a really <laughs> sure. mind blowing deal to not, not just, you know, for that aspect, right, but right, just right. You're, yeah. you're in a building with like some of the top athletes in the country, yeah. all American guys, and you're walking around ice sculptures everywhere. And, and I was like, it was a really good. Do you remember um, some of the trip. guys who were out at that time? Uh, Oh God, who was, I remember the receiver guy, uh, I think, was it Tamrick Vanover? Okay. I remember, uh, there was a big dude, Alexander. I think uh, uh, Warren Sapp, I want to say, okay. was one yeah, of those guys back then. Right uh, yeah. I can't remember. It was just tons of guys, and I remember seeing them and just going, man, I had a real good time and um, had a lot of respect for Bruce as a coach. You know, I thought, like, hey, he did that at Cal. I finished fourth in the country, beating Clemson that year. And I just figured, you know, he's going to do the same thing at Arizona State, you know, at some point. Um and that ended up being the case, you know, we had a good run, yeah, you, did. you know. So contrary to what the internet will tell you, mm -hmm. this guy actually played on the Rose Bowl team. There's some weird information there that says that you were here only a few years, but yeah, that's yeah. not necessarily, the, but that leads me into my next question. You were part of what uh, has to be the most you know, revered team in ASU history, the yeah. 1996 yeah. team that had a shot at a national championship. I was sitting in the stands as a teenager there at the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot, but what are some of your favorite memories? Maybe not necessarily just from that team, but from your time at ASU, what are some of your favorite memories? Um, there's so many, there's some good dudes, man, that I had a chance to, to play with that went out and did phenomenal things in the world that were bigger than football. Like, um, Brian Wood mm -hmm. uh, played fullback, fullback there. He was an employee, I want to say, like, number two with Under Armour. Yeah, exactly. We wore the prototypes. I remember them passing Digital, out. The, yeah, okay. yeah. I remember them passing out the maroon shirts, stretchy, and we're like, yeah. what is this stuff? You know, and I'm like, I like it. <laughs> and you end up finding out those are prototypes for Under Armour. But um, Pat, obviously, playing with Pat, you know, and, and his whole story and knowing the kind of guy he was, like, in the locker room and around people and, you know, coming to my, my house and watching fights with us and the conversations we would have. He was a NorCal guy, too. Mm -hmm. So we had a good connection. But, you know, just some good dudes, you know, um, good people. You know, um, I'd probably say, like, for me, uh, the, the biggest part of that year that I really remember was it stuck with me for, for years was there was a point in there where, like, um, and I think this has to happen in any program where the players have to want it more than the coaches. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, we were getting ready to play Nebraska. And if you know the history, Nebraska, like, beat the socks off of us, like, you know, every year, you know, from my freshman year. I remember 77 to 28 the year before. Yeah. Out there. yeah. You remember Bruce didn't even shake his hand. It was, like, all on ESPN. It was, like, a bad – blooded deal and not for any other reason that they just beat the socks off of us and they were good you know but so we got we came to play the nebraska game which was you know very monumental i felt like in that in that season you know when everything turned around but any of the guys that were uh seniors on that team would tell you we had a senior meeting and we're in a hotel 
And, uh, you know, the players just called it. And we were like, hey, we kind of felt like nobody really thought we could beat Nebraska, you know. And Phil Snow, who was our D.C. at the time, Phil, uh, he's still coaching. He was phenomenal. And um, Phil was the one guy I felt like that was like, hey, you know, if we play the scheme right, you know, we're going to win this game, you know. And I believe that. And I think a lot of guys believed it, but I don't know if everybody thought we could really beat Nebraska the way we did. So fast forward, we have this meeting and uh, the players are kind of like, hey, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, people don't think we're going to win this game, you know. And uh, and there was a point in there, a guy named Pat Thompson, mm -hmm. you know, and it is, it's hilarious. Actually, he got up and he just, you know, grabbed a chair and like threw it across the room. We've heard about Derek Smith. Yeah. Really getting pretty well. Steve Smith, you know, yeah, all those guys. So, But Pat threw the chair. I watched him do it. I was, <laughs> actually, he was actually my roommate my freshman right. year. He threw the chair. And I'm like, this guy threw the chair in the hotel. And he was a big dude. He was a big dude, yeah. man. He tossed the chair and everybody's like, that's it, you know. And it just went crazy. And we're like, we're going to win this game. And I think, honestly, at that point, obviously, 19 uh, nothing. I want to say. We mm -hmm. shut him oh, out. That's what it was. First time. They tore down the goalpost, took it all down Mill Avenue. I was on the field. Right. Yep. You know? <laughs> you know, 14-year-old me. Yep. Yeah. I, I think that was the turning point in the season where the players took over. Yeah. You know? And, and not so much you take over, but, like I said, you have to want it more, you know, than your coaches want it for you. You know? it's You play the game. So, I think there was a different degree of accountability with everybody. And um, we had a lot of good chemistry on that team, you know, um, some high profile guys, but really like more like a, a blue collar kind of team that, you know, came together. But even when you say that, you know, you go guys play their stock up, you know, so you look at like Jeremy Stott and Sueda and, you know, all the guys we had Terry Battle stepping in for Mike Martin, putting up a thousand yards, you know, we had good young receivers, Lindsey Jackson's Mitchell's. Uh, Keith Poole was phenomenal. Him and Jake had a great connection. You know, Derek I mean, Rogers playing out of his mind. Derek yeah. Rogers, you know, who really had only played like uh, one year of football. Yeah, the story right? is something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I watched him come in, and he would like he do drills with like he had like these gloves he would wear. They were like gardener gloves. <laughs> they weren't even like football gloves. And he would come out there with a beanie on in 118 degrees, and he'd be doing drills and motor. <laughs> non-stop motor so i mean there were some phenomenal dudes but that one moment where we kind of just you know it was we believed you know what i mean like you got to believe man and if you don't believe and your coaches wanted more than you it ain't gonna happen you know so that always stuck with me and even as a coach with my kids you know it was always you have to instill you know build that in your team to where they believe in you and then believe in themselves to go do, you know, exactly what you coach them to do. So it stuck with me, you know, th that part of the 97 year was, was special, you know? Yeah. So obviously you mentioned that uh, Pat Tillman, one, one of the, your teammates and a guy that you hung out with and got to know and went to war with. Um, what is it like with his impact both on and off the field and the impact that he has had on your life and just the experience of, of knowing, uh, you know, what ultimately what he went on to, on to do. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I talked to Pat for probably about an hour um, some years ago. I can't remember exactly when Jake had a celebrity uh, bowling tournament and uh, me and Pat were like the last ones there, you know, and literally everybody's gone. Me and Pat are sitting here for like an hour and we're just talking. And, um, you know, of course, everybody took the whole story with Pat, you know, and there was all these different directions that went, you know, but the conversation I had with Pat was, you know, he kind of was thinking to himself, you know, like, um, here I am at this age of my life. You know, he was in, in between negotiations with his NFL contract, per se. And I don't think he really agreed with what they were offering him. You know, there was a degree of that in there. A little bit of dissatisfaction with, you know, the NFL and how they handled him at that time, what he was going to do. But more so than that, I think he was thinking about, you know, his family. You know, he, he came from a long line of uh, – of guys who served, you know, and he was like, what have I really done for my country? You know? And I was like, yeah, okay. I get it. You know? And, um, you know, he, a week later, I remember looking up and they were like, you know, he's like Pat Tillman, you know, turns down NFL millions and he, you know, 
Army Rangers, you know. And I was like, wow, you know, I I didn't see that happening, but it made sense with the conversation we had and where his mindset was. But just knowing Pat, man, he was a different guy, but a dude's dude. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, the long hair and all that stuff. Everybody identifies with the outside kind of, you know, play kind of wild. You know what I mean? And, you know, he tackle and spin around and pop up, you know, and the hair's blowing everywhere. I remember and, cussing in post game. Yeah, and man. He was that dude. I mean, I, I remember he, he told Bruce Snyder, like, this was the whole thing with the players. He was like, you're going to have to play me now because I got stuff to do for yeah. lack of better words. I think that's like a title. Like I got things to do with my life. Right, right. Like a theme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, he, you know, we were like, who says that coming in, you know? And But he was a different guy, man. He he really was a lot of, res- we had a lot of respect for Pat, um, even as a freshman when he came in. And, you know, of course, the whole story behind him, you know, if you really know him, a lot of guys go, he was such a humble guy. He probably wouldn't want you know, everything that he's been given and honored as, but he definitely is deserving of it, you know? So that's that's probably it with Pat, you know? So everybody remembers that magical Rose Bowl season in 96, mm-hmm. uh, but not everybody remembers that the years leading up to that were pretty difficult. Yeah. How did this program go from 3-8 and eight in 1994 to nearly a national championship just two years later? Because I think that's inspiring that, you know, the players of this team now, given the struggles of last year, can maybe look to. Yeah, you know... Um, you know, kind of looking back on that, like I'm, I'm thinking of the the major players on that team, even remembering when Jake came in, um, being a young guy and getting an opportunity. Um, I think I remember his first touchdown pass. To, I think it was Carlos Artis. I think that's right. I yeah. Think, I think that's right. Um, even seeing Keith Poole, you know, just seeing Keith, how when he came in, he was this uh, small kid, you know, kind of pencil neck guy from, I think he was from, he's from NorCal too. I think he was Fresno area. And, um, you know, watching how how hard he worked and how much better he got over, you know, four years. Um, uh, guys really bought in and worked hard, but uh, there were a lot of things, I think, that led up to that one season. You know, um, it was special for, for good reason, you know, um, picking up guys, like you said, Derek Rogers, Derek Smith, Juco transfer, um, Scott Bondarahi, you know, um, you know, we had, we had a, um, a culture there, you know, that kind of centered off of the one at a time thing mm-hmm. with, with Bruce Snyder. And in my opinion, I think that uh, guys bought in, uh, we, we accumulated the right talent and I give, I give our coaching staff a ton of credit for that. I think a lot of people don't realize how good, the guys we had that came through the building were at that time. We had you Jackson here at one point coaching uh, running backs. We had, like I said, Phil Snow, Set and Six, Trino and Mark, Trino, you know, yeah. um, oh God, who's my guy? Uh, Dallas Cowboys. Um, he was Bruce's assistant, Coach D line. Tons of guys that came through here, mm-hmm. you know, that ended up going out and being uh, head coaches or having illustrious careers when they got through at Arizona State. Carl Darrell, you name it. I mean, just. So when I look back on that, you know, we built the culture and the, ta- the talent was there to build a culture, but there was also good leadership, you know, there, there was good coaching there, you know? So, um, you know, when you looked up, you know, four years later, we had a, a group of guys that really had jail, you know, and like some of the things my, the younger guys are talking about, about, you know, coming together, offense and defense, not having things be separate, mm-hmm. you know, we would all hang out together. You know, we really would. We watch fights. We, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of team bonding, you know, and, and, um, when, when the smoke cleared, man, that one year was just really special. Everything fell in place, you know? So that's the best way I could put that one. You know, it was just a accumulation of, of good talent and coaching and, um, it's a little different now. I mean, you know, guys come in and, you know, you know, you're going to spend five years with a guy, sure. you know I mean? And you need a portal and all these things now. I, I can only imagine the challenges these guys have, you know, to create that, you know. But it can be done, and it is being done, but it's a different game. So you're talking about the coaching staff. What impact did Bruce Snyder and, and all the ones that you mentioned there have, not just on you as a player during your time at ASU, but the rest of your life? Uh, I always uh, – one at a time always stuck with me, and that was one of our themes, you know. Um, but I think as men, you know, 
uh, when you're when you're a young man and you come to college, you, you're you're growing up here. You know, you're you're learning a lot. You know, I, I made a lot of mistakes in college. I, I had a lot of good things that happened here, but you learn a lot of things as well while you're in college about yourself. You know, you're they're not going to do everything right all the time. But do you have men around you that can you know speak to you and continue to guide you and continue to develop you, not just as athletes but as young men? And I think uh, having some of those guys around me. I know they helped me. I, I know they helped a lot of guys that came to Arizona State. And um, that always – I always felt like ASU was a place where I grew up, you know, a lot, you know. So, you know, a lot of a lot of respect for Arizona State in my experience here, you know. So, of course, ASU hasn't been back to a Rose Bowl since you were on the roster. You know, the Sleeping Giant tag has been around for, for decades yeah. at this point. What do you think needs to finally happen to get Sun Devil football – back to or being able to reach its potential you know especially in a situation where you have your sons on the on the roster and is a potential part of that solution yeah um that's that's a great question to be honest you know and, and you'll probably get different answers when you talk to different guys um in my opinion um it's just a different beast right now you know um obviously you have to you know the, the name of the game is talent acquisition and retention and I think that's that's slowly getting more, becoming more prevalent in college. I mean, it's an NFL type theme now in college, you know, where you got the portal now. Some guy may be here, you know, and two years from now he may not be, and you're replacing and you're constantly trying to build chemistry and uh, uh, establish those things. But I, I think, uh, in my honest opinion, I think it, it starts with the the mentality of the the coaching staff, you know. Um, I think we have like uh, uh, the right direction, so to speak. You know, I mean, Dillingham, he's a young guy. Um, he's got a lot of young, hungry guys on his staff. You know, I've had the, the opportunity to meet a lot of those guys. And Vince Amy? Yeah, Vince, you know, he has, Vince is a little yeah. throwback. He's a oh, throwback. Yeah. But, yeah, they got some some young guys that are hungry, you know, and, you know, that it's going to take some of that. But you got to get it right with the talent, too. You know, let's face it, you know, you can coach all day, but – you're going to need talent to go win out here. I mean, and how you do that and how you sustain that, there's a lot of moving parts in that thing. You know, I mean, we, we can't talk about it without talking about, obviously, NIL. Um, you have to have those things in place. Um, and you have to uh, literally be able to manage a roster uh, in a whole different way than anybody has probably been asked to do in college football ever. You know, so it's a constantly moving thing. And, it's challenging, but I, I think we can get back there. I, I think that uh, utilizing the portal, you know, is going to be crucial. Um, and recruiting guys that, that can grow, you know, not not necessarily. Everybody doesn't have to be a four or five star guy, but, you know, there's tons of guys out there who can play football. You know, they just need an opportunity and you have to see that in them and, and develop them. So, you know, I think if we get all of that stuff kind of lined up the right way, and I think we're headed that way, that, one of the beautiful things right now is it can change now. You know, I mean, there's – you can spend a year or two with the program. If you make the right moves, you establish things right. I mean, your whole program could look different, you know. So there are a lot of benefits now to, you know, how things are set up to where you can, you know, build that faster, you know, than it would take necessarily for a five-year program, shuffling guys. And so it's challenging, but I think we can do it for sure here. You know, Arizona State is a – for one thing, it's a it's a great place to live, you know, outside of everything else. It's a great school, great place to live. And I think that's really important when you get into recruiting. Recruiting is crucial. Um, but I think we have a lot of things lined up to, to get talent and keep talent. And I think we always are going to be an attractive place. You know, we just have to uh, be aggressive in selling Arizona State, you know, um, and the culture that we're trying to build, you know. So how do you even put into words uh, comparing what you went through as a student athlete in the nineties to what you're seeing now with your sons and experiencing as a father? I mean, these are like apples and oranges, different yeah, universes that's now. How do you even, how do you even compare those two things? Well, you, you're talking about just how do I compare it in general? Just, yeah, just yeah, I mean, just experience? what's it like when you think back when you were playing and, and what you went through versus what these kids are going through now for better or for worse. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'd say for worse, you know, um, and I'll say this, I think one of the, the beautiful things about the way the whole process happened, and I'm 
thankful and blessed, you know, that my sons did get to come to Arizona State is that I know it does mean a lot for them here. And um, I think sometimes, you know, with with the portal and all these other elements and, you know, just the nature of the game today, that some of that can get lost. You know, you got kids that can move around for financial reasons. You got kids that can move around because, you know, the game, the school may not mean anything to them, you know, and they're just looking for a selfish opportunity. There's all kind of different aspects of it. Um, but I mean, ultimately, you know, um, ultimately you just, you know, the, the whole, the whole process now is, uh, is much more challenging, you know, for kids to really dive in and have what's a home, you know? Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a difficult part of, you know, college football right now is because there's so much movement, you know, um, for me, it wasn't that way. I, I came to Arizona State, and this is where I was going to be. And, you know, back then when you transferred, you know, you sit out of here. People didn't want to do that, you know. So that wasn't the case. But I think just the attachment, you know, to the game and to the school is a little different right now. And and uh, there's some kids out there who, who, who are, you know, uh, just playing for the love of the game and, you know, but there's that other element that they have to fight against too. You know, it's, it's a different world right now, you know? So obviously in the grand scheme, like the time suiting up in the maroon and gold and getting out there on the field is relatively fleeting, but overall, in terms of your, like the life impact, what is being part of the greater Sun Devil community meant for, for you and your life? Uh, you know, this has always been a place I've, I've, uh, like I said, I grew up a lot at Arizona State, you know, and I got to spend uh, six years here before I left and went back to California. Um, this has always been, you know, what I consider like my college home, you know, like, and these guys probably didn't have a choice because every Saturday, you know, games are on and I'm nachos ready. I got my ASU <laughs> gear on. This went on for years. So yeah. that's, that's how it was like in our home. I mean, I'm, I'm a ruining goal. You know, so you can look at my social media. You can see I go all the way back. I, it never stopped. So I think for me, I've, I've been fortunate enough that I played here and I played with some guys that still stuck around the program and made some good relationships here. Uh, I always managed to get back, you know, and go to games. And, you know, it's always good to see guys. So, you know, there's a part of, of, of Arizona State that, you know, I identify with is, you know, part of my youth. And then there's another part of it that, also identify with, you know, is did help me grow, you know, a lot, you know, so, you know, I think we have a great community down here. There's a lot of opportunity, you know, you look how fast uh, the city's growing. Um, it's kind of funny because when I came back down here now, there's so much development right now. I'm like, I don't even recognize half of the city anymore. You know, I'm you can like, say that from like a year ago, right? Oh, much yeah. less, you know, decades. You know? Right. I'm living down in Gilbert and I'm like, there used to be nothing here. And you look up and there's like, you know, full communities, you know, so it's, it's beautiful to see the growth down here, you know, and a lot of people are leaving and coming here and, you know, from different states. I mean, I'm one of them, you know, coming from California. We just moved down here about a month and a half ago. So, you know, it's a beautiful place to be, man. You know what I mean? It's a good so, place to be. So when this season gets underway, what's it going to feel like? How proud are you going to be when you see your sons running out Tillman Tunnel, named for that teammate of yours yeah. running around that statue for Pat Tillman wearing the maroon and gold Jaden rocking the number five like right, you. Yeah. like what, what do you think that's going to be like in that moment uh you know I mean I'm really I'm 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 proud of the journey with them you know like um I know what they all had to go through to get where they are you know and it hasn't been easy man you know we we weren't born with a silver spoon in our mouths you know and We've had to grind, you know, um, these kids have been through a lot of adversity, you know, and um, it is going to be surreal, you know, like to, to see that it, it already kind of has been for me. You know, I can imagine forward what that's going to be like, um, but it's, it's, it's not about me. You know, I'm just this is their time and their experience and I'm proud of them. I would be proud of them regardless, but it does mean you know, a little bit more to see them come out with that maroon and gold, man. And, you know, I'm going to be fired up, you know, and I'm excited, man. I mean, I'm, they do the countdown deal on the internet, you know, it's like 79 days, 80 days. And I'm, I'm counting down and liking like everybody else. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for this deal to happen, you know, and, and it's an interesting year because I've seen all the tenures, you know, I mean, I've been following since Bruce sure. and, um, 
I've seen a lot of coaches come and go, man, but, you know, we'll see. I, I'm very optimistic about what this team can do and uh, what Dillingham's era is going to look like. And uh, I think they got a lot of new faces around the program. I think they're going to be hungry. And there's such an element of the unknown, you know, so that brings excitement too. You know, let's see what we got. You know, let's get out here and put it out there and let's go, you know. So I'm excited for these guys, man. I'm excited for the program, I, you know. We didn't always have, you know, he went through his recruitment process. Arizona State was always, you know, that was always like a school he thought of, you know. Obviously, there were some things that slowed down that process, you know. In comes Dillingham. The timing was right. But he's we've always been connected to the program, yeah. you know. So we're just – I'm excited for the program and, and the new direction and, and where they go from now, you know. So now we're going to talk with the uh... – the men of the Rashada family that are joining us here, we're going to get them all here. Harlan, we're going to start with you. If one year ago I had told you that we'd be here in Phoenix talking about you living in Arizona, <laughs> your boys playing, about to get ready to play for Arizona State, if we were talking about that in July 2022, what would your reaction have been at that time? Wow. I'd have probably been like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, was, it was so much – so much going on. Everybody's going in so many different directions, you know, that for us to get here, it, it, you know, there was some divine intervention and some things lining up the right way. And we were fortunate that way. So. All right. So for uh, Jaden and Roman, uh, obviously you guys weren't here last season when ASU had some struggles and put together a pretty poor year, new era completely from almost top to bottom, a lot of new faces, yourselves included. How exciting is it for you to, to, guys be on kind of on the ground floor of potentially kind of getting ASU back to where it needs to be? Um, shoot, honestly, it, it's just a, a part of the process that you have to enjoy. And, um, you know, we all, we all try to have that winning mindset. So everybody, you know, it's new everything, you know, um, obviously outside looking in, um, it's a new everything, new culture, new coaching staff, new players in there. So, Really, I just can't wait to get to the season and um, and see how we react and and uh, you know just create that winning culture. I would agree. I mean, similar just the habits really. It's establishing winning habits and like me and him, we we understand that. So you know, just trying to establish those winning habits right now. That's what I would say. So Harlan, I know that Kenny Dillingham was pretty much the deciding factor with the boys coming here. Not necessarily from the perspective of a former college football player, but just from the father's perspective. What is it about Kenny Dillingham that makes you comfortable and trusting him with their development? Now, you know what? When you when you go through uh, the process, like the, the recruiting process, you get to know, you know, the coaches, you know, coordinators, head coaches, obviously along with, your, your you know, your son, um, sons, um, and, and one thing I will say is, uh, you know, all the way back from, you know, Kenny with the other school, you know, he won't name the school anymore because he's a Sun Devil. <laughs> but he really was a solid, solid dude. You know, like we had uh, some really good conversations. And, um, you know, he was literally like uh, the reason why, you know, we went to the other school a few more times, you know, than – probably he would have if he wasn't there, you know? So I think with Kenny, man, there's, there's some, just some trust on my end. I think like anytime you, you go to, you know, quote unquote, send your kid off to school, you know, or, you know, your kid leaves to go to school. And, and we did that, you know, um, I felt like, uh, I felt like I, I trusted, you know, the hands I was leaving them in, you know, and that was really important for me. And I can't say I, I felt that way with every, you know, OC or head coach we ran into along the way, but I definitely felt that way with Kenny. So that 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 part was cool, you know. Now, I kind of touch on a little bit uh, earlier, but you know, during the the recruitment process for Jaden and all the things that kind of transpired in there, and just all the external factors out there, then a lot of the noise that was going on. Just how difficult was to kind of block out the noise? Obviously, you know, you're trying to find your next spot, and you, you as family is trying to support you in, the, in that process just for all of you guys just how, how difficult was it to kind of focus on just the task at hand of finding the right place for you 
amongst all the external noise and criticism? Um, yeah, um, honestly, it wasn't really that hard for me, you know, because, um, you know, it was it was hard dealing with that kind of stuff, you know, by myself. But it, it really wasn't hard keeping, you know, staying the same and staying true to who I am and um, letting everything else speak for itself. Um, that was something I was kind of prepared for. And like I mentioned earlier, just staying calm under chaotic situations. So um, it wasn't really that hard for me. I had a great support system. I had my family. I had my back through it all. And, you know, I had great people who were there for me and, and um, you know, made sure I was good, you know, mentally and um, just, you know, staying motivated. And, and, and that's what it was. I had a great support system behind me. And really it was something that um, – you know, I wasn't prepared for, but I easily adapted to it. And just a big thing with me, you know, with situations like that is just remain yourself and, uh, you know, don't react emotionally. What do you, you, you think, bro? I wasn't. This was mainly him and my dad going through this process. So I'll let them touch on it. Well, I, I'll be I'll be brutally honest with you. Um, I understand exactly what Jaden's saying. There's was a part of that where I actually commended the way he, you know, managed that situation. Uh, but then there was a difficult part of it for me, you know, just being honest. There was a part of that where, and you got to understand, like with now with social media and all this kind of stuff, everybody's got an opinion, right? You know, and everybody's writing a story with no merit that, you know, people haven't talked to us, you know? And so I'm watching people have their own interpretation of certain information. And at the end of the day, I know the kind of character my son has, you know, and anybody around him, you know, will tell you the kind of character he has. So anything for me after from a father, when you spend years, you know, on the, on the coaching developmental trail with all your kids and just being a father alone, you know, period. And you have this window where, you know, you feel like things are being misinterpreted or misunderstood. Yeah, there was a degree in that where that was difficult for me to understand or not really understand, but just to accept. But there were times where he actually made me go, OK, my son's good. I'm good. You know, and uh, at the end of the day, the truth, you know, will and always will prevail. And we know the the reality of everything versus, you know, what people want to say or anything like that. And I think that part uh, was probably there was good and bad in there, you know. So, Harlan, what advice would you give to parents of elite recruits and recruits themselves if when they go through this sort of process based on what you learned with Jaden? I mean, Jay, to be honest, Jaden's situation was pretty unique. Uh, it was pretty rare. There was a lot of things that happened that made that what it was. But I just talked to a parent uh, maybe a week ago, a guy who's, you know, and <clears throat> there are a lot of things now in the recruiting process that, you know, uh, kids, you know, have to be aware of, parents have to be aware of now. And, and and all I can speak from is from an elite recruiting, you know, where this dude's one of the top quarterbacks in the country, one of the top recruits in the country. I mean, now it's different. You, you'll hear from every single agent in the country, you know, you name it, guys that you wouldn't talk to probably, you know, your junior year in college now, these guys are talking to these guys their junior year in high school because of NIL and, you know, different legislation now in different states and all that kind of stuff. And so it's, it's a different process, you know, for, for parents. And I think a lot of parents aren't, are, are over, are um, overwhelmed and aren't prepared, you know, for the quote unquote business side of what you need to navigate through in recruiting at that level right now, you know, um, even even the recruiting part alone, just being a national recruit, being a highly recruited kid, you know, I, my best advice to anybody would be to probably to control it to some degree, you know, because um, I think it can be overwhelming even for the athlete, for the kid sometimes, you know, he did a great job. But at the same time, there were points in there where it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're talking to an OC and a head coach you're building all these relationships This is going on all the time, you know. And it can take a toll on people at some point, you know, sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for, but yeah, there's a lot of different things right now in the recruiting process for elite guys that, you know, 
parents need to be aware of. And, and I really don't think we have enough formats out there, you know, to prepare them for that right now, you know, and, and that's the interesting part of it. Jaden, you talked about just the support from your family going through that, that difficult process. So Harlan, Roman, um, how are you guys there? And you know, what kind of ways did you, did you provide support, you know, be uh, uplifting for, um, you know, your family member and your brother, your son that was, was going through a difficult situation? It was, it was kind of hard to uh, watch my, my brother, you know, at the age of 16, 17, had to make these crazy decisions. And it was frustrating because I know my little brother so well. So that part was difficult, but ultimately it just it, it matured him. Like so, it made him like like his his rate in which like the decisions that he had, like the magnitude of decisions that he had to make matured him now. So I, I just I, I knew that at the time, and I knew that it would make him more mature. And he you know so it was difficult in, in real time, but in, in retrospect, I think you know there was no other way that. I'm sure he could speak, but he there's no other way that he probably would have wanted it because it did make him stronger. So just, you know, that's what I would say. Yeah, for for me, man, the the biggest thing for me is, you know, let's face it, uh football is is a beautiful game. You know, it's something that you're gonna do. Uh you're fortunate if you can play four years, a year, uh, if you can go play ten years in the NFL, but at some point in life you have to you know, redefine yourself and, you know, move on in life at some point. So when that happens, to me, it's about family. You know, your family should be there to support you no matter what at any point in that process, you know, and, and it's challenging. But I think the biggest thing for me was just being there, trying to be there from a position of support and love, like, you know, and, and you know, his brothers are going to be different than me as a father, you know, um, but I think it took all of us, even his mom, his sister, we all played a certain role in our support group. And it was just about keeping that intact, you know, as we kind of went through the gauntlet of whatever else we were going to face in the process. And that's the way it's going to be, you know, at some point football will be done, you know, but your family's your family forever. So that's got to be your solid support group, you know, and if you're blessed and fortunate enough to have good friendships along the way and good people around you, then that's good too. So we just try to stay solid as a family, you know, so, uh, Jaden Roman, what's it going to be like playing together on the same team at the college level? What are you looking forward to most about sharing, sharing this experience together? Um, it's going to be nothing like it. Um, I know this will be something that we tell our kids about someday. So definitely something that I don't take for granted, like, um, you know, going to war with my brother every day in the weight room and going to suit up, you know, on game days. That's going to be nothing like it. And and uh, that's a crazy, you know, not everybody gets to experience that. And um, that's something I can't wait for. And, uh, and you know, definitely, you know, winning, you know, winning with my brother, you know, along with my teammates, like there would be nothing like that. I agree. I mean, I, I, I had the privilege of playing with my older brother, um, Harlan Jr., and it was nothing like that, you know. So when, when it was time to, like, make the decision of being able to play with him, that was an easy decision because I know how fun it was, um, especially winning. Um, but there was a lot of stuff that we could have did better um, on that team that we were on, me and my brother. Like, we could have came together and established some winning habits. And I think, like, this second time around, you know, I I, I know what that looks like. And he he knows what that looks like. So now we just holding each other to that standard and really just using it to our advantage. You know, like, no, not everybody gets to play with their brother. And that's an advantage. You know, like, you don't want to let your brother down like your blood brother. So... It's just again establishing those those winning habits and obviously winning. Nobody likes losing. So obviously you guys have been playing ball for a number of years. And so you know, as brothers, you know, what is your favorite football moment, whether it's a play, a single game performance of the other that you can remember? Yeah, for me, um, you know, uh Roman, his side, his story is different than mine, you know. So I grew up, you know, always, you know, using my two older brothers as role models, no matter, you know, how old I was. And, and I remember, uh, I think my football Roman, my football moment for Roman was like when he truly found that love for the game, because, you know, um, he had different interests growing up, you know. Um, and and I think like, you know, we were living in Sacramento at the time and and uh, I, I feel like that's when it really, 
you know, that's when he really fell in love with football. You know, just seeing him out there grinding, you know, working hard, making sacrifices, you know, uh, driving this far away for this, uh, going, moving and for this. Like, that was my football moment for him because that showed me, like, you know, that he was ready to put down whatever, you know, for the game. And, and uh, you know, and that's really what, what I think shaped him as a man today, you know, like um, – you know, ever since ever since then, he's been like one of the hardest working people I know. And, uh, you know, that kind of shaped him and, and uh, helped him out and not just football, but life. So that was one thing where I uh, commend him on. And and uh, that was pretty, pretty cool scene. I have a funny story, actually. So <laughs> um, I used to play quarterback and uh, it was a seven on seven team. Um, ran by this great man named Coach Hurtado. May he rest in peace. Yeah. Um, it believed in my brother. My family really was just a great human being, a great coach, um, and a great man. Uh, like, I want to give him his honor. I think we all do while we're here. Um, but he always believed in my brother, like, even before anybody did. So, like, you know, I was a quarterback, and so I tried out for the this B team of the 7 on 7 team as a quarterback. And, you know, they cut – even though my dad was a coach, it was like they cut me. It was like, you know, he's not going to play quarterback. And, you know, I was like, that was fine. Um, but then, like, my brother, I remember, like, in the tryouts, he was in, like, eighth, seventh or eighth grade. And, like, six, six or he seven. was in sixth grade. <laughs> and he came and, like, they pulled him in. And it was just like a practice. And he was just lighting up. Like, I'm talking, like, we had dudes with D1 offers on the team. And he was just lighting up the defense. Like they would pull him in when we didn't have a quarterback and we wouldn't stay, the offense wouldn't skip a beat. And that was a winning seven on 17. And I was frustrated. Like I'm so competitive. So it's like my little brother's a better quarterback than me. You know, like I was like a freshman at the time. I was pissed off. But like just seeing like how he would just dominate the, at that level, that was a moment for me when I realized like, all right, how good he actually is. Cause he's always been good at. You know, even baseball, some funny stories of baseball. Um, but that was like for football, that was a moment for me was when like I used to see him. I would be pissed off. But like I was like, you know, you that was he was just that good. So I remember that was a moment where I realized like how good he could be. I do. Uh, I will say like, um, you know, him talking about that. I remember you guys asked me a question earlier, like, when did you think like I created kind of like that separation factor? And uh, I will say that it was probably my seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade year. Um, I was at a tournament in a, and and um, I had no clue. Like, you know, I was like, I'm about to go in with these high schoolers. Like, I didn't even have cleats on. And Coach Hurtado, um, he who he was talking about, it was a coach like who who like truly believed in me like before a lot of people did and. And it was genuine, you know, he wasn't doing it for anything in return. And, and uh, you know, like, I wish I could have gave him his flowers while he was here because, like, you know, I'm standing here, like, right now. And, you know, unfortunately, he's not with us no more. And, and I, I never really got to tell him, like, that that was the moment where I kind of, like, found myself, like, as a quarterback. Like, this is what I'm going to do. And, and I think that was, like, a, a big thing, like, Man, I went down there and he was calling plays and I just like ended up scoring that drive. And, you know, um, that was like one of my favorite football moments, even though it was like just a seven on seven. I was just a young dude out there. Um, I remember when I scored like the whole high school team, like they all picked <laughs> me up and and Coach Hurtado just acted like nothing happened. Like he believed in me more than um, I believed in myself at the time. And. And um, I know it definitely takes a couple people like that, you know, at some point in people's career. And Coach Hurtado was just so genuine, you know, and and he helped me out a lot. And and he helped me, like, uh, you know, find my talent and quarterback most definitely. So, guys, how helpful has it been through the things you've gone, gone through in the last few years as high school players, recruits, college student athletes? How helpful has it been to have a dad who played major college football? Yeah, it's been real helpful, you know. Um, you know, he, he knows the business of it all, you know, uh, you know, he knows, he knows the business through it all and kind of experienced it. So, you know, just, just going in there and not, not, uh, you know, just going in with a heads up is always helpful, you know, of, you know, you know what you're walking into you and you know what it takes, you know, and, and, uh, he kind of preaches to us, you know, 
work right now, you know, like work right now, go a hundred to 10% now. So you don't have to later. And, and, um, I know he's telling us that off of experience and, and, um, that definitely helps, you know, I learned, we learn from all his rights, you know, and we learn from all his wrongs and that's, you know, not, you know, nothing more you can ask for from a father, you know, um, than to tell you the goods and bads, you know, so just going in there knowing, uh, what it takes and, and, um, that's pretty helpful to me. Yeah, it was extremely helpful. Like, you know, just going Juco, I had the privilege of getting coached by his, his coach, John Beam, who coached my dad in high school. Um, so just like, just, you. yeah, just navigating through like all that. But even my, you know, my story, like high school, you know, playing at so many different high schools, like he just always kind of equipped me to like be prepared in each situation, like how I can do do the best with the cars that I was dealt. Um, and ultimately, I think that's what made me like my, my the mental aspect of the game, like is I give a lot of credit to him is just being resilient, you know, and knowing what it comes with, you know, fighting through experiences on the field, injuries, you know, or just new programs, just, you know, so it was extremely helpful. I, I don't know how it would have looked, you know, w without uh, our dad. So you should have done this on Father's Day. <laughs> and was that your birthday? <laughs> It was. Yeah. Well, happy belated birthday. Thanks, man. Did they take care? I mean, you got a yeah, you got the double yeah. birthday Father's Day combination. That's I not know, easy. I man. know, right? It's easy for them though. Right? Yeah, two for one. But no, it, it was cool. Yeah. You know, I just had uh, uh, my, my sons and my other son flew in, and we got to just hang out and lay low. You yeah. know, I mean. I'm getting older, man. All you want now is just peace. You know, it's not a problem. Yeah, you know, Roman Roman got him a pack of uh, jelly beans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, hopefully, he got, got me some, some cigars. That was cool. Okay, okay. that's good you too. Know, right I mean, on. You know, there you yeah, go. Got me some cigars. You know, and um, he got him a box. He brought a box of donuts. To the house. <laughs> donuts and jelly beans, a cigar. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Sounds like a good I'm, afternoon. I'm, I'm a simple guy, man. That'd be a good day to me. Yeah. Uh, he he actually gave me a real cool gift too. He gave me like a one on one card he got from. Uh, this QB retreat thing oh, that's cool. and I thought that was pretty cool, you know, but there's, there's no, no gift, you know, it's, you know, how guys are, man, we get weird when you give us a gift, we're like, yeah, <laughs> cool, you yeah. know, yeah, thanks, you know, but it was just a time, man, I spent half the day, like, getting ready for them to come over, yeah. and we grilled a bunch of stuff, and just kind of hung out, and that, that was all it is, man, you yeah. know, just another day to lay low. So Harlan, when it became clear that you know your, your boys were going to be able to you know play college football, how did you draw upon your personal experiences to guide them through that process of going you know not just through the recruiting process and finding the next in the college program, but also you know once they are at their college at, as student athletes and just you know try to help them guide through that process and through your own experiences? Uh, we'll probably start with the recruiting process. It was so different, but even though things are different, some things are the same. You know, like relationships you know you're gonna go on so many visits you know what to expect with people you know you get in the room all that kind of stuff you know and um but probably like the actual the game and you know you know it's really they gotta walk their own walk and it's a different time you know um there's a lot more things on the table now than there were back when i played but like i said some things stay the same so it was just always you know kind of trying to let them know kind of what to expect or, you know, what the next level might be. You know, it's, it's a different jump from – he jumped from high school to college. Roman went the JUCO route, you know, and there's all kind of different steps, you know, along the way. And um, so just kind of just – the main thing for me was always, you know, wherever you go, you know, especially with his situation, like the, the main thing is the main thing, you know. What's the opportunity for you? You know, um, you know, what's the opportunity for you to play? What kind of scheme are you going into? You know, who's the coach? Is he going to be there when you get there? You know, um, a lot of different things, you know. So I've always kind of keep my – try to keep my pulse on the game now and even with what I experienced for what that was worth, you know, um, just knowing how hard it is and what it really takes, you know. I think it helped a little, you know. So, Jaden Roman, what's the best football advice that your dad's ever given you? Um, 
really the the word adversity uh like i just remember that a lot coming up you know just um like i said before just being mentally resilient you know like you're gonna deal with ups and downs from coaching all the way to you know like injuries so just being adaptable that i just remember just i i remember that concept i can't remember a certain phrase or anything but that that stuck with me and ultimately crafted me to the position that i am personally uh for me it was uh you know a couple of things that always stuck out to me that he's he's uh gave him was uh just you know it's 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 really simple but like you know i kind of take it pretty serious it's just the whole like hard work aspect um and, and taking things serious. So that's why uh, I always had the perspective of, you know, when when you're going and having a meeting with a coach, like make that like a meeting that you're having with a CEO of a business that you're applying, you know, that you want to have a job at, you know? So my thing is just, you know, take it serious and respect the game and, and work hard and, and what you put in is what you get out. So I think that, that those are like, uh, some topics that that meant a lot to me and probably carried the most weight um, on how I p try to apply it. All right, so we'll uh, close out on this. You know, then we'll go down the line, starting with Jaden. You know, 10, 20 years time, what do you want the Rashada name to mean to Sun Devil fans? I want the Rashada name to mean the royal to Sun Devil fans. I I want to, like this. I want our last name to never be forgotten. You know, in this stadium and. I know that takes a lot, but I know me and my brother are willing to put in the work and and stand on a principle. And, you know, we kind of, kind of came here with a mission statement, you know, it, and like like we said, like this really does mean a lot to us, you know, like probably more than it would for, you know, a kid who doesn't have history with family here. But I, this means a lot. And I, I want the Rashada name to to not be forgotten here, you know, as not just athletes, but as people, you know, I want, I want our names to be on that wall one day and both of our numbers. And, and I just want, you know, the, I just want Sun Devil fans to never forget us, not only as athletes, but as people, you know, and make sure this is a place we come back and give back and, you know, just, you know, make this a place that, that um where our name is never forgotten here. I, I mean, I would agree. Like just, we have a lot of plans for like, just establishing like, you, you know, like community work and just like my, my a, a thing that was like kind of um, introduced us when we were growing up was just like how kind of how Pat Tillman was. And that was always like what we kind of strive. At. I mean, not always, but as we get older, like just striving after like how to do things the right way, um, a certain level of professionalism you have to have approaching your craft you know whether it be football or whatever that is so just kind of like putting that all together and having that approach to the game um i hope that we can leave that that similar legacy of like just doing things the right way um always treating people with respect we make sure to you know know the people's names that, that are cooking for us in that facility um all the little things you know just being detail orientated and Hopefully that projects into like our talent on the field, but there's plenty of great players that have played for this program and you don't remember their names because that's that's not all it is. It's not just what you do on the field, it's, it's how you carry yourself. Um, the people that I remembered are people like Pat Tillman that I did it the right way, that were just great human beings. And beyond football, that's that's the most important thing for, for I think all three of us. So that's what I would say is just having that legacy of like, being st good stern people who like did it the right way so you know i was gonna say i had a moment too um uh spring ball you know i went up to the santan uh, you know um uh deal and I, I sat up there and there was a guy up there who you know when the spring game was over with this what took me so long to get down the field it was a guy who this guy had been like a sun devil fan you know uh, for like I want to say like 30 something years, man. And he, uh, he came over to me and a, a buddy I was standing next to, Demario Vaughn, who played line here. We were sitting there talking. And he's like, Hey, you know, um, I want to get your autograph. And I'm like, You don't want my autograph. It's going to make that ball worth less money. <laughs> and he's like, and I'm like, He doesn't even know who I am. He's like, I know who you are. And I'm like, And he gets to telling me about his story about how. You know, he's been a Sun Devil fan for all these years and he's seen all the games and and I'm sitting there and I'm like, 
I'm a fan of his because I'm sitting here kind of amazed at how dedicated this guy is to this program, you know, and how much he's been there and supporting this program for all these years. And there was a moment in there just, you know, me being my age now where, you know, the game is done. Obviously, we know that, you know, my, my, my sons are coming along. And I was like, you know, this is kind of what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's it's bigger than you. You know, like you have your time here, you know, and what you do with your time, you know, will determine, you know, how people may perceive you during the time you had here. But it's bigger than you. You know what I mean? Like this is all bigger than you. But when you're young and you're going through that, you it's your world. You're only thinking about what what you're going through. And, you know, so when I think about like a name, you know, like the this will always be bigger. You know, there's a bigger Arizona State football is Arizona State football. It was Arizona State football before me. It will be after me. And there are tons of guys that have came and contributed. The best thing I would like to see is that my kids end up being positive contributors and good people. You know what I mean? And wherever their talent takes them, so be it. You know what I mean? But just knowing that you're a part of something that's actually bigger than you will humble you, you know? And um, so I just, I, I thought that experience with that guy, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit, you know? And I just was like, man, like, you know, it's, it's a big deal, you know, being a Sun Devil. You know, there's people all across the world. You got fans for all every college you go to, you know, this is where I went, you know? And so it's just a lot of respect to just, you know, carry yourself with respect, represent as well. You know what I mean? And people are going to have a good opinion if you do good things, you know, and, and that's, that's really it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think all you have is your reputation at the end of the day. So, um, you know, and your last name is a big part of your rep reputation. And a big thing is, uh, you know, like he said, never, you know, you're never too big for anybody. So that's how mm -hmm. Roman said, you know, know all the people cooking your food, you know, try to get, we get to know the janitor's names you know like i mess around with them every day but at the end of the day like just being somebody remembered as a good person is most important because football will end one day um no matter what record you put up they'll be broken one day you know so i think being remembered as as a, a good person you know like how pat tillman was you know like um i'm sure there was better safeties you know that that um came through the nfl but his name is going to be always remembered because of the person he was and what he was willing to sacrifice and i think you know um that's that's somebody i look up to as um as far as how you want your name to be remembered sure gentlemen sincerely we thank you for spending some time with us here today we're we're honored that you chose to tell your story with us here and man I, i'm sure sundable fans are going to be through the roof, fired up for the future of Sun Devil football. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to see this side of the Rashada family and, and yeah. learn all about you here today. I appreciate you guys. One legacy to guys another. For us. You know, right? I hear a lot of pops in you over there, too. There you man. go. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that. That's a, that's a true compliment if there was one, my man. Yeah, appreciate you. And that's going to do it for this very special episode of Speak of the Devils. I'd like to thank our amazing guests, Harlan, Roman, and Jaden Rashada. Make sure you stay with us on the social media side of things. Joe and I have some very cool plans for some content coming up in the weeks before fall camp gets underway and a couple of very uh, interesting news announcements that you'll want to stay tuned for. And to do so, give us a follow on Twitter at SOTD Podcast, on Instagram at Speak of the Devils. You can find us on Facebook, and you can give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram at BDenny29. And I got to echo what Brad said. A huge thank you to Harlan, Roman, and Jaden Rashada. We've been doing this thing for about uh, 12 years now, and, and it really doesn't get any better than that. That might be the best show that we've ever done, if you ask me. Uh, and a huge shout-out to our amazing sponsors who make all of this possible. Of course, DeFalco's Deli, Cactus Sports, DevilsDigest.com, Jones Auto Group, Spaghetti Shack, and Sun Devil Family Charities. And, oh, by the way, if you'd like to follow me on social media, I'm on all the things at Joe Healy 42 and when you're done supporting our amazing sponsors, make sure to drop us a five-star review on the podcast platform of your choice. Joe and I will be back soon with some more great stuff to get you a little bit closer to Sun Devil football.